Hey, what's going on, Los Angeles? What is up? Welcome to the Rams Skinny here on the LAFB Network. We are Los Angeles Sports. Came up with that new tagline. I kind of like it. Yeah, that's good. Right? It's kind of nice. I dig it. I, I, it's not really that creative, but kind of like it. Our city, our network. We are Los Angeles Sports. Whatever you want to do. But anyway, thank you all, Rams fans, for coming and hanging out with us by week for our Los Angeles Rams. So it's a get right week. We can talk about how to get this team right after sitting one and four how they can turn the season around. We've done this a kind of a couple times, even the last few weeks, looking at the schedule, winnable games. So now we're going to look at potential moves maybe the team can make to save and salvage the season. Obviously, some injuries are going to be coming back. Cooper Cup looking likely. Maybe not next week against the Raiders, but potentially the week right after that. Um, and then so on and so forth, getting guys back. And maybe they can add some pieces that can get them back to 500 sooner rather than later. So we'll talk all of that here on your Friday edition of the Ram skinny, but first and foremost, happy Friday to my, my good friend, our executive editor, co-host of the Ram skinny best hair in LA skinny T what's up, brother. I uh, have had just a few goals in my life. Uh, one of them is to become a a paid writer. And, uh, so you mentioned that and also to have great hair. So, (laughs) So it's, uh, you know, it's, you know, I've achieved so much. (laughs) Yeah. I think I'm done. You have a great head of hair, great head of lettuce, very (laughs) jealous. I'm like, I need to shave because I'm in the cul-de-sac zone right now. That's why I'm wearing a hat. Um, You know, it's not, it's not getting good. Hey, Dodgers playing tonight too. Game five, Dodgers stadium. I'm still a Dodger fans. We are, for those that haven't noticed, starting Dodgers coverage at LA. If you network, we're also starting Lakers coverage. We're going to have all LA sports here soon, but we're kind of adding teams little by little so we can do proper coverage and not just, you know, say we cover the angels and do one article a month. So we're going to add slowly. So we're doing Dodgers and Lakers when the Lakers season starts. Um, but yeah, got, got a big game five against the Padres tonight. It's funny, skinny. Like I'm going to be honest. I'm not a huge baseball guy. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of people that listen to our show know that I hail from Denver. So um, if I'm being honest, like I grew up and I'm still a Rockies fan, but they're just so God awful that I just like really buy what's usually opening day, March 31st, April 1st, by like April 20th. I'm like, all right, baseball season's over. So uh, I kind of stopped watching, um, but you know, I've lived in LA now for 15 years. I know they're in the division, so it seems like weird, but you know, the Dodgers are always good. I live here. I don't really care about baseball that much. So I always like kind of root for the Dodgers, but now that we're starting to cover them and I've started writing some articles with the Dodgers. I'm like kind of all in, like I'm, I'm in this, this playoff atmosphere. So big game tonight at Dodger stadium. What say you? Yeah. Huge game. I, I, you know, I, I wasn't following too closely. I spent a lot of time thinking about football. I haven't written anything about the the Dodgers at all, but uh, you know, kind of surprised that the Padres have been so frisky uh, given kind of the, the dominance of, of the Dodgers. But uh, you know, you know, playoffs in LA are great. Uh, it's a great time to be an Angelino uh, a great time to, yeah. to kind of follow the, the, the Dodgers. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I follow the song. I say uh, root, root, root for the home team. I'm not going to root against the home team. That's for sure. <laughs> I like that. I like that. And, you know, last thing I'll say, and then we'll get into Rams talk, but there's a lot of parallels between the Rams and Dodgers. When you look at just the injuries they've had to sustain, like Dodgers obviously went and made all the big moves with, with Shohei and Yamamoto and, and others, but they've just been injury riddled all season and the playoffs, you know, no different. Obviously, you know, Kershaw has been out since what July, but he's done for the playoffs. Um, who he would have just been a, a piece, not necessarily a, a dominant one, but still, you know, a leader on the team. And um, Freddie Freeman been injured, missed game four, um, and they ended up winning with the bullpen day dominant fashion. So uh, maybe the Rams can take some note if the Dodgers can get out of this first round and say, okay, yes, we have injuries, but hey, there's still a game to be played. And we get the job done. And maybe some of these moves we're going to talk about can get them back to the promised land. Show is always brought to you by our friends at BetOnline. Head to BetOnline.ag today. You can bet on that Dodgers game tonight. Uh, I never really look at baseball lines. I don't even know what it is. If it's if it's runs, I'll be honest. Um, but obviously football lines, NFL, college football, USC, Penn State tomorrow. I'll be there at the Cauley. A big one if USC can save their season against the fourth-ranked Nittany Lions. But all that can be done at betonline.ag. Make sure to tell them that the guys at the Rams Skinny and the LAFB Network sent you. So we're going to kick this off, Skinny Team, talking a little linebacker talk. And there's a name out there that I haven't seen a ton of chatter on Twitter, maybe just because I haven't been on as much the last 48 hours or so. Um, 
but I haven't seen a ton of Rams fans talking about it. Like usually when someone gets released, it's like, oh, Rams go after him. Rams go after him. Everyone kind of gets on board. So maybe I've missed it. But Devin White, formerly a fifth overall pick by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, was with the Eagles, has been a healthy scratch by the Eagles, and was just released by the Eagles. We can talk about this. We're not going to talk about it a lot, I guess, but a little bit. I mean, there's, there's pros and cons. But is this a move the Rams should make? Because we know how not good their linebacker play has been, to put it bluntly. Bad. It's been bad. It's been bad. Um, and what do they have to lose? What say you? Yeah, no, I, I think, you know, the, the, the elephant in the room is what's going on with Devin White that he gets cut by yeah. a team that needs uh, some linebackers. Uh, I was looking at their depth chart. I, 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 Nicobe Dean is, uh, is one of their starters. And a guy named Zach ba, ba, Bond, <laughs> B-A-U-N. So, uh, you know, Devin White should be able to beat out uh, that guy, at least, uh, considering yeah. I've never heard of him. But, um, you know, then then you you got to wonder, uh, you know, is he better than Christian Roseboom? Is he better than Troy Reader? And, you know, I would say yes. So I think, you know, he's he's coming off of, a, a, you know, getting just getting cut. There's doesn't seem like there's a ton of chatter around it. It's it's a way that they could snag a guy for cheap that would just raise their level uh, that that much. Um, and, and we've seen it, you know, it, those two guys have given up big run plays. Um, they've given up big passing plays. Uh, they've they've kind of decided games in some ways um, this year. So, you know, if they, you know, we don't we don't know what uh, the new version of the the load bearing walls is or how they're, you know, thinking about this team build. But um, this would certainly help them in their chances for the rest of the season to make a, a, an attempt at a playoff run. Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, when you look just at the player, and I don't know what's happened over the last, we'll, we'll call it even two years, because it, it ended odd in Tampa in 23 when he was a starter and then all of a sudden became a healthy scratch kind of down down the stretch. But when you look at, he's still only 26 years old, has 23 sacks over his time, didn't play at all in Philly. So over his time in Tampa from 2019 to 2023. 20, he finished it 2021 was a pro bowl season with three and a half sacks, 128 combined tackles, 124 tackles in 22, 140 tackles in 20. And as a rookie, 91 tungle tackles and two and a half sacks as a rookie. So the dude put some good stuff out there. And then whatever happened in 23 got, he had 83 tackles in 23 and two and a half sacks before getting in Todd Bowles doghouse for whatever reason. Um, and I was talking to a buddy of mine who, who lives in Tampa and basically said like some stuff he's washed is there was a bit of a laziness to him, like not necessarily working his all for the play. Um, and so I don't know if that had something to do with it. And then obviously goes to Philly and either wasn't a fit, whether it was work ethic or laziness, whether it was the guys you mentioned actually were just better. I don't know. Didn't go, but now he's on the market again. And when I think typically a guy that has had that over the course of 18 months, I would say stay away from because there's a chance that that messes with your culture and your locker room. Not saying he'd be a cancer necessarily, but a guy that hasn't fit now with two orgs was released after five games for not playing for whatever reason. And even if the talent on tape is better than what you have in your room, it could be detrimental. However, I'm a little different in this instance because at one and four, the Rams kind of just need to throw some Hail Marys and just see what could potentially happen. And although I know they love Roseboom and Reader and those are good team guys, why not take a flyer on a guy that was the fifth overall pick, is only 26 years old, has had 140 tackles in a season before, can, as a modern day linebacker, can cover, can go side on the sideline. And the Rams have proven over the Sean McVay area era that they're kind of the NFL's rehabilitation center. They've been able to take guys that have failed elsewhere, come into the LA Rams culture and revitalize their careers. I mean, we could go down the list. The one most recent Tampa Bay Buccaneer Baker Mayfield, who now is a paid got paid by Tampa Bay to be their franchise quarterback after five games with the Rams and their organization. So 
Odo Beckham Jr. had had a nice run. Obviously, he hasn't been able to get healthy since the Super Bowl, but he, had a, he was a nice reclamation project. Leonard Floyd revamped his career. Uh, Von Miller came and won a Super Bowl and then got paid again. So if there's any team that can take a guy that's like, well, there's what's what's wrong there? The Rams have proven they can actually get something out of it and and benefit them. It might not mean he'll be here next year, but if he can come in this year and make that room better and they can get him for cheap because he's a free agent, you're not trading assets. I say 1000% they need to pick up the phone and, and talk to whoever, if it's his agent or whoever, and get him at least for a visit to LA. So I'm for it, 100%. I don't know about you. Yeah, and I think the one thing there is the Rams have been so very careful about who they do introduce and who they don't introduce. You know, you, you, you never hear about uh, them drafting guys that have, you know, um, character issues. You know, they have a couple of guys that have been in a little bit of trouble, but, you know, they're they're not the, the guys that they're, – they're not the team that are going scooping up those guys that just had the domestic violence charge or the yeah. – you know, the gun charge or whatever, which I like I'm for. Yeah, well, absolutely. Yeah. 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 So, you know, if, if there are those, if there are those concerns out there, they're not even going to touch them with a 10 foot pole. Yeah. Um, but I have, I keep, I keep thinking about this in terms of the defense. Like, is there a chance that they lost some of the, the, the defensive, um, the kind of lost the room in there when they traded away Ernest Jones, who was such a big leader and yeah. who, you know, was so important to this team and I haven't seen, you know, it, it kind of uh, uh, explicit concerns by uh, defensive players about the linebackers. But it seems like there's, you know, kind of there's some there's some things going on there where they're not uh, they're not they're, they're not a happy family right now. And, and they're not winning, which is a, a big contributing factor to that. But, you know, I wonder I wonder where where the state of that defense is and who who's all bought in and who's who's a little, still a little bit uh, frustrated uh, mm-hmm. with with where they are as a team and also with what happened with Ernest Jones. And that might be a moot point. I know that's in the past, but um, it could be a very real thing. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I know there's been chatter when that happened and we won't belabor it, but like you know, that Rams know what they're doing and not everyone knows the full story and this and that, but I don't think there's any question. He was the leader of that defense and um, was the green dot was obviously once Aaron Donald left was the best defensive player in that defense was seen as going to be, you know, the, the source that was going to hold that unit together. Cause you have all these new faces, not a whole new scheme, but a little bit new, obviously a new play caller, different coaching. And he was kind of the glue that was going to hold it together. And when you trade him a week before the season starts, there's going to be, some trickle down consequences and not just, not just the lack of talent that left when he, when he got shipped to Tennessee, but some of the leadership that you just mentioned. So not saying Devin white can be that leader. Obviously he's proven he hasn't been (laughs) over the last two years, but I don't know if they have that on defense. So why not bring in a guy new and, and whether he seizes that or not, at least you have a ceiling of this is what he can be. And if he doesn't reach that, I mean, how much worse are you? based on what these linebackers have shown. Again, we Christian Roseman and Troy Reader are great guys. They're good team guys, but they're not starting NFL linebackers. And we've seen that through five games now. Um, it's it's out there on tape. It's not just us like hating or anything. And I think everyone agrees with that. Why not take a flyer? I'm sure you can get him for cheap. It's not like they're going to be spent. Probably vet men. He's sitting yeah. on the couch right now, right? Yeah, he's got to find some place to go. Yeah. Why not somebody will snatch him up. Some, some, somebody will snatch, snatch him up at some point and – at least bring him in. Let, let's, and guess let's... what? Philly comes to LA. What is it? Week 10, 11. Yeah, I think right if he can there. start for the Rams, play his former team and be the one that stops <laughs> the tush push, be the one that gets in there and stops Love a fourth it. down tush push. Takes down Give Saquon Barkley. Add some uh, run defense. Need it. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, look, are you looking? What week is it? It doesn't really matter, but they do come to LA here at some point in the second half of the season. Um, 12, and I think it'd be great. 12. You know, every there was a greedy Vance. I always always bring USC into this. I know there's a lot of Rams fans that are also USC fans. Um, greedy Vance, who played for Florida State last year, hit the hit the transfer portal, and obviously committed to SC, and was asked during before the beginning of the season. So there was a story of him. He was getting recruited by. He's either getting recruited by LSU 
or he was, I can't remember, or he's from Louisiana and never got recruited by LSU, but there's something that happened with LSU. And basically he said, obviously he loved Dan Lynn and the, the scheme USC is going to run. But he said one of the main factors was he wanted to go somewhere that was going to play LSU. So you could prove yeah. what they were missing. So there's <laughs> definitely, I don't care what people say, there's definitely some fire about going against a former team and showing what they missed. So why not come to LA and you can play at SoFi against the Eagles who just cut you six weeks into the season? Yeah, that'd be poetic. That would be great. Poetic justice, right? As uh, Bart Scott said, the great Bart Scott, poetic justice. And I have it right here. It is Sunday, November 24th, Eagles at Rams, Sunday night football, 520 prime time. Oh, nice. That'd be yeah. a great place to do it. Great place. So, all right, what's next on the docket? Who else are we talking about? I'll let you let you go. Well, uh, so uh, uh, from ESPN, Jeremy Fowler and Dan Graziano. Uh, you Jay know, talk Fowler, about Graz. Yeah, talked about uh, what is the possibility the Rams are still interested in trading Matthew Stafford. At hot topic. Point. It's a hot topic. Um, so yeah, just you know, what what are your thoughts? Is there a market out there for him? Um, is this the time to blow it up? Because that's exactly what it, what it would sig signal. Or you know, we we talked that we were gonna, um, you know, that the the first Seattle Seahawks game was going to be like the true test. Um, to see if they can if they can pick up two wins uh, in the next two games, um, you know the season looks a little bit different. There's a little bit of hope there. Maybe something can be done. What do you think? Yeah, it. I mean, it all depends on these next two weeks. If you lose to the Raiders after the bye, things are looking pretty bleak because not only are you one and five, but you lost to a bottom of the barrel Raiders team that is just scratching for answers and the whole Devonte Adams dilemma. And now they're starting a new quarterback, Aiden O'Connell, um, who will have one start under his belt because they're not on the bye this week. But if they were to lose to the Raiders and the Seahawks, and then at one and six, it's yeah, it's time to blow it up. Uh, you're not coming back. You'd have to win every single game to finish a, what 11. Well, I guess you could lose one more and finish. No, no, no. God, my math is terrible. The one and four, they lose two. They're one and six. They could they could lose one more game and go ten and seven and have a shot at the playoffs. But with the stretch they'd have, that is just you you can't count on that. Um, I know the Rams are always going to fight. McVay's never going to throw in the towel, but um, that is unlikely. So if they were to lose those two games, we don't. I don't think we either of us think they will. And the Seahawks are looking very vulnerable now after losing two straight, losing last night to the, the Niners. Um, so they're searching for answers. The Raiders, obviously, I, I think the Rams will win both of those, but let's just for the sake of talking, they lose both. I do think you have to pick up the phone then and see, and what it's going to come down to skinny, I think is the only team that would trade for a Stafford at his age with his contract is a playoff fringe team that has an, either an injured quarterback or an underperforming quarterback. And I think you look, there's, there's a few, and I don't know if you've looked at like the standings right now. Um, obviously well, I, if you look, go ahead. Well, I wrote about this yesterday and I compiled compile a short list here. There you um, go. so the injuries are, 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 you know, you never know who's going to get injured in the next few weeks, but you got the new, uh, New Orleans saints, uh, Derek Carr is going to miss several weeks to a tango, tango Vailoa is uh, a mystery. Uh, we don't know yeah. exactly what's going to happen with him. I mean, these aren't necessarily, I mean, are they playoff ish teams? It's hard to say, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then you got Anthony Richardson with the Colts. Um, obviously he's the future of the franchise. They've bet a lot on him, but he's been injured more than he's been healthy for his first two seasons. Um, yep. And, you know, I imagine that that franchise in particular is getting a bit, a bit, um, a bit frustrated uh, with where, where they are in the standings right now. Um Underperforming, you got the Cleveland Browns and the New York Giants, and both of their coaching staff seem to be under a bit of um, uh, stress, a bit of hot seat situation for both of those teams. And then yeah. Graziano and Fowler recommended uh, through uh, the Las Vegas Raiders in there, which they I, I don't think they're even contending for. They're, they're contending for the top spot in the draft. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's interesting. There's really not a lot of optionality out there i think there's not like a team that you're like man this team is just a quarterback away there's some teams like the ones you just mentioned that he would certainly help make it like the colts are really interesting because 
Richardson obviously dealing with injury, but also he just doesn't look ready. Like he's only, he's super young. He played one year at Florida before getting drafted fourth overall. Now this is now a second. I think he's like 21 still or 22. Like he's one of the youngest QBs in football still. So it wouldn't even be bad for them, even if he does get healthy to like get Stafford and allow him to sit for two years behind Stafford. Um, I know they have Flacco, but obviously Stafford's an upgrade there. Uh, so, I mean, that's kind of interesting. The, the dolphins obviously is, is very interesting because they do have a lot of talent. They've, I think underperformed, but also, you know, they're on their third string quarterback now, uh, with two out and Skylar Thompson out. And so they were picked up Snoop Huntley off the streets and, and he started their last game and a half or whatever. So they're, they're probably the most likely that obviously everyone's talked about just with the weapons they have and putting Stafford with Tyreek Hill and. And uh, Jaden Waddle, obviously that that could be a fun offense with Mike McDaniel. Um, so that's the most obvious one. But I mean, there's not. It's not like there's eight teams the Rams could trade him to because Here, it's only going to be a contender. Here's my favorite one, and I didn't put it in my article, unfortunately. But what about the Pittsburgh Steelers? It came to mind. It came to mind because they're three and two, right? Yeah, Russell three. Wilson is finally back practicing this week, but they already announced Mike Tomlin announced that he will be the backup to Justin Fields. They're not paying a lot for either quarterback. I think they're combined paying for both of them, like 3 million bucks. They're paying both like the vet minimum. Stafford comes in and immediately is better than both of them. They've got an unbelievable defense. I mean, and George Pickens and George Pickens and Pat Fryermuth and great running back room with Najee Harris. I mean, that one makes the most sense if they would make that move. And the Rams and Steelers have done business before. Remember Kevin Dotson just traded last year? Yeah, yeah, but th- these kinds of moves are not very Steelers kind, kind of moves. I mean, no. they've had three head coaches in the last 100 years or whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it, uh, you know, when you, when you kind of dig into those, you know, who's out there. But trades look crazy until they're made. Like, yeah. I think this, the Stafford trade to the to the Rams is is a great example. I, I think if we were doing a podcast several years ago, you know, talking about like, you know, should they move on from Goff? Is you know, like what you know, like what if they go after a guy like Stafford? You know, just Goff for Stafford, straight up. Who says no? That kind of thing. Like yeah. nobody, nobody would buy it. But yeah. it's just hard to imagine uh, him not on the team because they have they have no um, they have no contingency plan. They have no succession plan. Uh, for for after Stafford, so a part of me thinks a part of this deal has to be a quarterback, and that muddies the waters of of, of these other guys. They're going to trade Stafford for Jan- Daniel Jones. I don't I don't think so. Uh, you would know, it, Anthony Richardson has some upside, but would it be? Yeah, and I don't think the Colts move on for Richardson. But I've never been a huge fan of his. But sticking with the Steelers, it could be interesting Stafford and for Fields. Obviously, the Rams would also get a pick back. But say the Rams trade Stafford and got like a second in fields. I'm not huge on fields, but I think in McVay's system, he could have success still young former, whatever 11th overall pick, whatever he was. I mean, that, that could at least give you some finish the rest of the season. See if you have anything with fields and then go into the draft next year of like, all right, fields our guy, or we're drafting a quarterback, but at least, you know, that could be interesting. Yeah, well, and the, the one I just thought of is, uh, you know, we can still get Spencer Rattler on this team. <laughs> he's starting this week. <laughs> if you want to, if yeah, he's starting for the next several weeks, I'm sure. So yeah, maybe we'll get a good look at him. But uh, uh, yeah, you're better. You're better at this kind of thing than I am. But like in terms of compensation, if you're just going to go, if you're just going to flip him for picks, what's uh, what do you think Stafford would get, or what, what would the Rams get for Stafford? I guess. I should yeah, say. I mean. No way you're getting multiple firsts. I know a lot of fans want that, and obviously that'd be great. Um, you know, he went for two. Basically, the Rams traded Goff and two firsts for Stafford, whatever that was, four years ago. Um, I don't think they could even get one first. Maybe from a team like wow. the Steelers, who will probably be drafting later in the in the first round. Maybe you could squeeze one out. Um, but to me, it's more of like a two and a three. Maybe you get two twos. I don't know. Uh, it depends how desperate a fringe team is that thinks adding Stafford's gives you a shot for the Super Bowl. Then why not go for that? Um, but to me, you're looking at twos and threes. Um, I don't think a first would be in play. I mean, look at what Ramsey got. Ramsey's 
much younger yeah. than Stafford. Obviously, quarterbacks are different and go for higher market. Um, but you're also taking on a pretty hefty, you know, cap hit for the next two years of 50 plus million. So, and someone like the Dolphins, if they do that, they're, they're basically having to cut bait with Tua because Tua's just got paid, remember? So, uh, like, yeah. what are you doing there? Where the Steelers are one of the only teams that could probably do that, the Steelers and the Colts, because their their cap space in terms of allocation for quarterbacks is so low compared to, I mean, again, the Giants, you're having to tr- include Daniel Jones because they just paid Daniel Jones. The Rams want Daniel Jones for that price? I mean, why would you? So. No. There's, that makes the, the optionality even lower, I think, uh, in terms of who you who you can do it with. So there's ways to get it done, obviously. Let's let, need me throw, and, let me throw one more out there. Team you're familiar with. What if uh, what if the Denver Broncos goes after uh, Stafford? Is that something you could see? No, they won't. They, they're all in on Bo Nix. He's won three straight. They're they're improving every week. Um, Sean Payton wants a guy that's going to work within his system and having a rookie, you, you can force that a little bit. Obviously there's some growing pains, but um, the last one I'll throw out that we talked about, I think way in the beginning is Minnesota and oh, JJ McCarthy's the future, but he's, he's really young also. And he's hurt all year. Sam Darnold's the, the story of the year played great fight on former Trojan running, running the Trojans out of the, the tunnel tunnel captain this weekend against Penn state. But I don't, even with how great Sam Darnold's been, It'd be hard to argue that he is better and has higher upside than Stafford, that the youth is there. But I think that he's only 27 years old. I think the Vikings as of now would still say, and they have said this two weeks ago, that JJ McCarthy is their future. So this would allow them to have a little bit higher upside quarterback in Matthew Stafford. They run a very similar system, obviously. Kevin O'Connell is their coach coming from the McVay system with the Rams. Rams can get Darnold, who's 27. See what you have with him. Maybe he becomes your franchise guy, but obviously much cheaper. He's on a one-year, $10 million deal with the with the Vikings. Um, the, the question for the Vikings is, they're obviously undefeated. Like, do you risk throwing off any chemistry by making a change there? Because I think everyone would agree Stafford would be a little bit of an upgrade, but until they lose, like, why change? If it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of thing. But on paper, it would make a lot of sense, and it gives them Stafford for two years. Let's McCarthy learn under Stafford, get fully healthy. Doesn't have to be forced in right when he gets because they're going to have a big question this offseason. Are they re-signing Darnold and having him be the guy, or are they going to go in blind after a good year with Darnold with a rookie that's coming off a season-ending injury, and the whole thing could explode in their faces? You get Stafford, you got two years to like really work him into it. That one kind of makes a lot of sense, but it's it's a matter of if they believe it's worth risking the chemistry flow um, to make that upgrade. What do you think about that last one? I love it. I love that a lot. And I'll, I'll say, you know, this, that uh, I'll love it even more if they throw in my guy, uh, Andrew Van Ginkle into that, uh, oh, that God. trade. Get Ginkle then, to LA, baby. <laughs> come on, get the gink. Um, but yeah, that one, that one makes it, t- makes a ton of sense. And, you know, lots of, you know, ties that bind in, in that building with Kevin O'Connell as the head coach. And uh, so, you know, crazy, I, I wouldn't say crazier things have happened. That would probably be the craziest trade, an undefeated team moving on from their quarterback. That would yeah. be insane, but it would be, it would be a huge upgrade. And, and the, 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 the thing that fixes any kind of culture things or uh, chemistry or anything like that is, is, is winning and, and, yeah. and Stafford would help them continue to win games. Sam Darnold is going to come back down to earth. I promise you. He started. He started to look that way a little bit in the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, but the defense well, does enough. Here, yeah. Not to sorry to cut you off, but here's awesome. first of all, let's keep reiterating: the Rams aren't trading Stafford unless they lose like two or three in a row and are at, sitting at one and six, one and seven before the deadline. So, um, I think we both agree that if the Rams rattle off a couple wins here, then this is all moot. But it's the bye week. What else are we going to talk about? <laughs> The only other way this happens, so the Rams have to lose, which obviously we don't want them to, but if they lose to the Raiders and Seahawks, if the Vikings all of a sudden go on a little skid and they lose two or three, then that's when it's like, okay, do we upgrade this position? If Sam Darnold has some bad games, throws some bad interceptions, then, it, I mean, they're not going to, tra- this will never happen if they're sitting 8-0 and at the trade deadline, 9-0 at the trade deadline. Like, you're not changing anything at that point. But if all of a sudden they're 5-4 and four, or, you know, 6-3, and three, and they've lost some bad games because of poor QB performance. 
then that's when it could get interesting. So that's actually probably if those losses happen for both teams, that might be the most realistic thing to actually happening. Especially you know, because of the continuity between KOC and McVeigh. Exactly. Yeah. And if, if, you know, they could ship Goff right back here and the ship Stafford right back to, to Detroit, maybe that's the, <laughs> that's the, wouldn't that be wild? That would be a wild one. <laughs> that, that, that would have to be a first, maybe, maybe back in like the twenties or something like that with some weird owner <laughs> that, <would laughs> that happened, crazy. but that would be, that would be incredible. Uh, no, I, yeah, I love that. Uh, you know, I, I love Stafford as a Ram more than I love that trade, but I think that's the one that makes the most sense. Yeah. So hopefully we don't get to that point. Hopefully we win. So, okay, let's talk a few more before we wrap up. So let's, how do we not have that happen, right? How do we get to the Rams win the next two or three games and get close to 500 and save the season and put the team on Stafford's back to lead them to the promised land because of the greatest turnaround in NFL history from starting one and four and making the playoffs. How do we get there? Any other players you're looking out there that you're like, Hey, what if we had this guy to the roster? Well, there's a couple of, you know, guys out there that are available for trades, it seems like. The one most unhappy person out there, it seems like, is Hassan Reddick, edge rusher. He currently plays he plays for the New York Jets. He's under contract by the New York Jets. Just got fired by CAA. His, his, uh, his sports you know manager. it's bad when your agent fires you. That's when things yeah. are bad. Yeah. Um, so that, that situation doesn't seem like, seem like it's going to resolve itself. Uh, so – I, I I imagine he's going to be traded uh, before the deadline. And, you know, I, I've i really been impressed with this uh, Rams defensive line over the last couple of weeks. It seems like, you know, Kobe Turner's really firing, but we've always wanted to add an edge rusher with experience um, ever since, you know, Leonard Floyd was, moved on uh, and, and they've addressed it. And I think that, you know, the, one, two, three punch of Michael Hoyt, uh, Byron Young, and Jared Verse are good, but this would just elevate that that rotation uh, to an, an an elite level. And this pass rush is going would go from a pressure rate towards the middle of the league and just rock it all the way up. And you know that experience he would bring, they would definitely be getting more sacks, and that would open up Kobe Turner as well. So the the there's not a lot of bright spots on this defense, and. Um, you know, Kobe Turner has been one, and but they're they're giving up a lot of a lot of points and a lot of yards. Fourth fourth most most per game uh, in those two metrics. So, the defense still needs help, and and this would this would get it there. And you know, looking at the back end, uh, I think they're improving in that. So you know, if I'm going to go secondary uh, or defensive line, I think I think I would opt defensive line. Yeah, it's. The Reddick situation is so interesting. Like imagine just giving up $9 million for being like disgruntled or unhappy that you think you should be making more. Like you think you should be making more. So you'll just light on fire $9 million. Like that is insane to me. Yeah. That's a lot of FU money. (laughs) Yeah. Like insane. And so clearly I don't know how you rekindle that relationship. I mean, the Jets traded for him and he has yet to play a, a snap yet to i don't even know if he's been to practice ever um holding out his agency his agency now fires him because they're losing money too obviously you know they get a percentage of all his checks and they haven't gotten any so they fired him so he's at a point where you would think like okay i got no agent no more i'm nine million in the hole for this season i don't want to play for the jets we just fired our head coach which i don't know maybe that was maybe he will not want to play with him now maybe he didn't like uh Sala, but you got to think like oh, you he's got to get somewhere where he can just like okay put this to bed get on the field and start having those checks cash again and why not the Rams I think the Rams could be a great fit and again we talked about them being the the kind of rehabilitation center of the NFL disgruntled players come to LA and love playing for McVay he's like I've never heard a single player that doesn't like playing for this organization um and so obviously if you're the Rams you're talking doesn't have an agent anymore so you're talking directly to him like if we make this trade are you here on day one like we're not renegotiating crap like either you're here or you're not and um if you are we'll make this trade so you got to do that first and foremost but yeah why not i mean you mentioned it they, they need depth behind young and verse he's a former first round pick you know him well he played in your division drafted by arizona um has had a lot of success in this league so add that down the stretch because the rams We've talked about the pressure they've gotten with Verse and Young and Fisk, but 
but those haven't amounted to a lot of sacks. And so if they can get more guys that of that ilk, hopefully those will start turning into sacks. Now I expect this Raiders game then to get home quite a bit. I, I could see, we'll do a preview later in the week or next week, but I could see a, a four five, six sack game for this Rams. But if they had a Hassan Reddick, maybe even more. So I'm for it. Why not? Depending on what you give up. But at this point, the Jets are like, what, you know what they traded for him? I don't know if you have it in front of you, what the Jets traded for him. I, I don't recall though. Let's see. Jets trade. But, well, okay. It's a conditional 2026 20, third round pick. So it wasn't a, it wasn't a hefty price tag. Okay. So yeah. Oh yeah. I forgot that he was with the, he went from the Panthers and it was with the Eagles. Like obviously the guy, it's maybe not a great locker room guy, but Hey, the Rams rehabilitation center. But yeah, if you can get Reddick for, so that if they trade a conditional third, be the Rams like, all right, we'll give you a fifth, sixth. Well, the, the, the big the, the big sticking point would be the contract talks, which they would yeah. the Rams would want the Jets to take on the responsibility for paying for the majority of his his contract. So maybe that kind of maybe you have to sweeten the pot for for the Jets. And you know, I don't know, I don't recall what his contract is, but like for a rental, like uh, are you, are you going to trade a third for a rental and fourth for a rental? I don't know. Yeah, they did it for Von Miller, but Von Miller's a Hall of Famer. Um, yeah. for Reddick, you're doing a sixth, fifth or sixth or seventh at this point. Um, but if you can get it for that, why not? I don't even know how many deals he ha- or how many years he has left in his deal, but, um, I don't think it'll happen, but I would much rather go after Devin white. Who's a free agent yeah. and you can get for dirt cheap, but you know, Reddick's obviously shown he can play in the league. I just, whatever the hell's going on in New York, who knows, but LA sunshine weather's better. What a dumpster fire out there in New York, man. It's, oh man. It is. It's just it incredible. Bad. Crazy how Aaron, Aaron Rodgers is like a pig in mud out there. He just loves uh, all the drama. <laughs> it's just crazy how and yeah, they, they traded for him. It was like Jets are back. Since Broadway Joe Namath, Jets are gonna be good. And they have been nothing short of terrible ever since he went there. <laughs> I'll throw out one more name for the for the edge rusher trade talk is uh, Aziz Ojalari. Uh they got a lot of pass rushers over there and uh in, in the other New York uh, uh, team, uh, the Giants. But he's got uh, 21 sacks on his career, 10 of which came in his in, in his rookie season. hasn't really been able to follow that up. That might be an interesting one. But what do you think about a uh, what do you think about adding an uh, offensive player? Yeah, we we've talked about receivers before. If Coop is back after the bye, like the indicated week seven, right? Is kind of the reports. So basically, the Raider That's game. The- that's the the optimistic approach to it. Optimistic approach is the Raider game, and then Puka you would think is they're saying back by what the the Viking game at the earliest end? whatever the first November first November game is. So that's I, that's the Seattle game, I believe. So if if that happens, and obviously I don't think you need to go receiver. You're obviously not going running back. Offensive line obviously it depends on when Jackson and and Avila are officially getting back. Jack uh, Alaric Jackson's actually played really well. Rob Havenstein's kind of been the the one that hasn't played as well, but you know, you've got a stalwart in him at least. So I don't think you need to on offense unless you go for just a little, a pillar or not a pillar, but a, a cheap option as like a tight end, maybe like Higby. Have we heard any updates on when he's going to be back? Obviously Colby Parkinson, I think has played well, but again, you, we talk about it a bunch. So I don't want to keep saying it, but they brought him in as a blocker. Like he's not supposed to be your leading receiver leading target getter like he has been a couple weeks now um that's just not what his role should be so potentially maybe a tight end but i mean tight end in the nfl it's like you have the top three and everyone else is about the same so i don't know who else you would be going to get um i think at the offense though if it's me and i want to get your opinion but for me i think they just hold pat and hopefully if they can fortify the defense a little more with some of these moves the offense, you keep working, you keep massaging, and hopefully you get some of these guys back that you paid all this money for. I mean, they have, what, the third most expensive offense in football? Um, it's got to get some of the guys back. So for me, I would hold Pat on offense. I think you got to just wait it out until these guys get back. Yeah, I mean, I'm still in the kind of in the wide receiver idea um, just because I know they do a really fantastic job with receivers once they're in their building. Um, you know, they've, yeah. they've got Jordan Whittington who's taking steps forward. So – you know, I think, you know, kind of going back to that edge where I feel much more comfortable with the edge rushers they have, but just dropping another guy in there like they did with o- o- Odell Beckham. Um, they they knew how to use him right away. He became, you know, Stafford's top target by the time the playoffs came around. Um, 
and there are still question marks about when Puka's is coming back. You know, it's not season ending. Um, yeah. But it seems like you know if if a team is able to contain the the rushing attack, um, they haven't been able to find uh, the next fastball pitch that that can you know put defenses on their heels. And Jordan yeah. Winnington is good, but he, he's not he's not that number one guy. And you know, interesting names out there. I don't know how I feel about it right now, but uh, uh, Amari Cooper has been talked a lot, a lot about in terms of uh, trade value. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we mentioned. Uh, Devonte Adams already uh, episodes a couple a couple weeks ago. Contracts crazy on that one. Yeah. Andre Hopkins, I don't know, I don't know. You talk me into that. Yeah. Anything? Anything? These names doing anything for you? Yeah, I mean, T Higgins. Hopkins, what's Hopkins now? Thirty four. Probably. <laughs> so I think you get him for pretty cheap. Um, T Higgins would be interesting. Obviously, a great talent, but I, I just think that price tag would probably be high. I mean, who would have thought the Bengals would be one and four? Um, but I just think that price tag for T would be too much. Because I, I think you're – who they would get at at for a receiver would tell you, like, how they – how do I say this? So if they're going after a, a star long-term receiver, that kind of tells you that Cooper Cup's time is – is I'm not saying they're going to trade him necessarily, but, like, they don't see him being – at the level he's capable of for much longer, whether it's injury, whether he's just ready to kind of hang it up and go into coaching or whatever it may be. If they go after more of a wide receiver three type rental, then that says like, okay, we have faith. Our top two guys are going to be back soon. We just need someone to get us to that point and then can be a, a positional role player once we're fully healthy. So Deandre Hopkins, I think could be that where he's been a number one, his whole career getting older, but I think he's still talented. They're just not, using him um in that way where he's at now so i kind of like that only only 32 years old 32 so i mean and receivers obviously everyone says they 30 is like the death age for a receiver um is when you see a big drop off but i'd be i'd be down for hopkins actually d hop great hands bring him in i mean has kind of an odell beckham vibe right where it's just a guy that's been a number one kind of a tailor end of his career just needs kind of a little reboot i like d hop And he would, I think he would offer like a nice deep option as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I mean, he can kind of do it all. He's one of those, I mean, he obviously how great he was in the beginning of his career. Like he did everything for Houston. Um, he's not just like a deep threat or a short threat, whatever. Um, obviously he's older, but yeah. yeah I mean, this exercise has proven one thing to me, which is uh, fixing this Rams team is tough. <laughs> yeah. You know? Uh, yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they're really, there's not a lot they can do based on what they did this off season and, you know, they're injured, but they can't just like go get anyone because of the cap space or, or limitations that they have. So yeah, not a lot of options. They really just need to get healthy, hopefully, but they got, they got it. I mean, it starts with this and we'll talk next week, but they just, they have to beat the Raiders. There's, I don't care injuries, whatever, like everyone's got injuries in the NFL. Rams have been obviously injury riddled more than others, but I don't care. This team should beat the Raiders. If you lose to the Raiders, it's time to pack it in. Yeah, I can't. I can't see a world where that happens. But stranger things have happened. I didn't yeah, think they could beat by the uh, Cardinals. So what do I know? <laughs> yes, this is true. <laughs> this is true. So um, yeah. Anyone else? Or should we wrap that up? No, I think that's good. Um, it's crazy to me that it's Friday because of my my uh, <laughs> my schedule is. This is my Tuesday, so I, I just totally yeah. forgot that it was Friday. <laughs> I know it's weird, right? Um, so, well, yeah, let us know in the comments if there's anyone you guys want to see. Obviously, a, a little less than a month from the trade deadline, as we keep saying, but just reiterating, like, don't foresee any big moves happening unless the Rams were to like drop two games or maybe win two games. Maybe they're sitting then on that fringe where they want to make a run and go all in again and go after some big names. So, um, we'll keep an eye on it. But hey, some of these, for, I think Devin White would be a good move, but let us know in the comments if there's anyone you want to see the Rams go after that could help save the season. Any thoughts of the bye week? Any just hellos? Happy bye week, Ryan and Ryan. Like we always love those. Love all the comments. Hope everyone has a great weekend. If you haven't subscribed to the Rams LAFB YouTube channel, please hit that like and subscribe button. Helps us out. If you're listening on podcast platform, Apple, Spotify, you can just search the Rams skinny, hit the subscribe, subscribe there. And obviously all of our Rams content is at LAFBnetwork.com. That's skinny T. 
I'm Ryan Darrett. Thank you, Ramley, for hanging out. Everyone have a great weekend. Enjoy the bye. We'll be back next week. 